and they enjoy it because I had the children involved, you know, modeling this thing. I'm going to call Cabral probably one of our greatest all-around thinkers, leaders, fighters. Basically bankrupted the uh, Portuguese uh, army and Portuguese nation. And uh, was really the driving force behind freeing up a lot of the people, a lot of the uh, Africans colonized under uh, Portugal. Uh, I do the same thing with Imhotep. I have a child stand there. They choose somebody who looks like a child. They do a little thing. They take pictures and laugh. And then I explain to him Imhotep, third dynasty, uh, the world's first known multiple genius, the world's first known medical doctor, astronomer, uh, poet, all the rest, scribe, and all the rest, architect, astronomer. And so that that's another thing that sometimes they don't completely believe me, but at least they have a bookmark, check mark in their mind to, to, to check for that. I had some doctors here once, Ghanaian doctors, and they, they didn't believe me at all. <laughs> Except for one of them went away and did some little work and came back and said, hey, you know, the thing is true. So if you're own medical doctors, you know, what about your children? Because this is, you know, we're all trying to and dig our way out of it. We're all trying to dig ourselves. <laughs> get him, get him, Arlene, get him, get him. <laughs> we're all trying to dig ourselves out of that. Uh, uh, my painter, he gives me different versions. This is the last version. We'll see how it goes. Uh, but Toussaint L'Overture, uh, one thing they always do for us, they always tell us, tell these children how great Napoleon is and all of this kind of stuff. So if he is the number one general in the world and he was beaten by Toussaint, Toussaint. So best was number two general in this right? Because the brother got him. But we talk about Haiti, uh, how, how they got free and became a republic. Not only getting rid of the French, but also getting rid of the British. Uh, Nakbewa, if you're coming from uh, the north of the country, or Burkina Faso, he's one of the fathers of uh, a lot of the groups coming from there. Uh, when you go to the north, I mean, when you go to Kumasi, you'll see uh, um, Ose Tutu the first, the very first, the Santahini, or king of the, the Chante. Uh Thomas Sankara, Sankara coming from uh, Burkina Faso, one of those young, uncorruptible leaders from there. Hopefully, we got another one like that today. Yes, we do. Uh, I'm in a yes, from Kush. Uh, unfortunately, at this time, now we're talking 60 BC, 10 BC, the, the uh, um, what am I trying to say? The, the uh, Romans had taken over then, and they decided they would go penetrate further, mm -hmm. taking over Egypt, penetrate further into Kush, ran into her, got a sound beating, ran them out, and they maintained their sovereignty for another like three centuries. So, yeah, we this need is the children to know because my children had to go learn all about the Roman army. Right. And their formations and what they wore and why they were the greatest army in history. I said, well, second greatest army in history because the sister had knocked them out. Uh, Menelik II, we mentioned about uh, Menelik getting organized to prevent uh, Ethiopia from having the fate of all of these other colonies uh, that it had from British and the French and the rest. My uh, brother uh, Malcolm X, children brother like to Malcolm know what that X, X is about. Gives me an opportunity to talk about our names and how these things change and then of course how dynamic he was in, in our upbringing. One of the, one of the greatest Seth of all Wild, time. Uh, one of the great Zulu warriors among the day. Won a lot of battles, won battles against the British. Uh, Zulus being very organized and strong, but this is really when you start seeing the change in uh, start seeing the change in technology in terms of the disparities. Uh, Akhenaten from Kemet, also 18th dynasty, comes from uh, the son of Queen T up front. Uh, we like to talk about... So he's a brother the, also, right? There you go. Yeah, he got, yeah. He, got, he got the... He got the yeah, all yeah. The, you know, he's got that whole... But anyway, we talk go. about them in that. terms of African spiritual systems and the legacy coming into Judaism, Islam, Christianity. Bob Marley, you might have heard of him. <laughs> yeah, he's done a little singing. Uh, Wangari Mathai of Kenya. You know, she won the Nobel Prize for planting all the trees and doing those things, but also very strong, astute politically. Singbe Pie, uh, you've probably heard of the Amistad, where he was leading the uh, revolution or the, the mutiny on the boat, on the ship, and trying to bring them back to Africa. Fred Hampton, uh, Fred Hampton, chairman of the Black Panther Party. His son actually came and gave us a nice presentation here too. Oh, that's just awesome, man. Yeah, Fred Hampton. A lot of people have seen the movie about the Judas and the Black Messiah or something yeah. like that. Yeah. It's something, something like that. Yeah. That's that's exactly the title yeah. of the movie. It's like all psychological, like all of Hollywood. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know how to, how to do it. Uh, Samuel Mahariro, we have to remind them that the Germans committed the first genocide of last uh, century against the Herero and the Nama people. They basically did a dry run for what they ended up doing in World War II with the Jews and Gypsies.
Let's see, Oliver Tambo also kicked out of the country for three decades for his, uh, his activism, and uh, he supported materially in every other way possible the anti-apartheid struggle while he was out. Agustin Alneto of Angola, medical doctor by training, well-known poet, but also the leader of their uh, struggle against Portuguese in Angola, uh, being the first president. Zabeth of Haiti, uh, this, is, this is a not well-known story, but this young girl starting at nine years old started to run away from the plantations of Haiti. That was the French plantations of Haiti. They would catch her, they would beat her, they would do whatever. As soon as she got a chance, she'd run out again. So we do a real uh, active thing when we're showing the children about her waiting for another thing to be clear and running again and, and then they do all the things to it. But basically I'm saying, look, everybody didn't accept this slave experience. Right. We had people with just that spirit that said, we will not maintain, we will not submit, and until we die, we're going to fight. Mm -hmm. And that young girl was doing it. Barbary of Sierra Leone, she was also, um, I mean, he was known for the hut tax wars. The British did this all over their, their places, or whether it was Kenya, South Africa. Basically, they come in and they say, look, we want you to dig these mines and do this work for us, which obviously they don't want to do. And they said, well, uh, you have to do it because I put a tax on your hut, and you got to pay that tax in pound sterling or whatever. The only way you can earn that is dig this hole. So my, or, you know, mine. And so my man said, let me, let me make sure I understand what you just said. <laughs> I'm going to go be right back. So he brought the army. Right. <laughs> so that was the, the, the genesis of the hut tax wars, because this is a ridiculous arrangement. <laughs> Fought had a lot of successes, but at the end, uh, outgunned. Uh, Felix Mumi, I have him here. He's a young man, an uh, up-and-coming politician, uh, probably on the route to be president there in Cameroon. He made the mistake of going to Geneva, Switzerland, mm -hmm. and negotiate some of the terms of the post-colonial uh, arrangement, and uh, he was poisoned with thallium at dinner. Mm -hmm. Now, the reason that's important in this case is because people in Ghana, well, I don't know, everywhere, but America, you know, they have these visions of, of people in Switzerland, Geneva, Belgium, you know, this is all close to heaven, you know, and the, the people there are just, you know, NGO, passing out money, you know, they really got this thing bad. And they really don't quite understand who they're dealing with. So I, I, I give them this example, and though even Geneva, Switzerland, with all of the stuff you think about it, you know, they kill you anyway. So that's uh, Felix Mumi. Uh, Second Hune from South Africa, a uh, very strong fighter in down, down there in the Popo area. He was uh, able to have a lot of success against the Boers, which are, of course, are the Afrikaans. Mm -hmm. And uh, after having success with them, of course, he had to go in and fight the British too. Uh, at the end, there's a lot of intrigue about half-brothers and successions and all of that that ended up uh, getting him killed and then getting the, the guy who betrayed him killed. So, you know, there's some lessons there we try to get to the students. Nahanda, a Zimbabwe, the spirit woman who is uh, really the, the spiritual force behind the Shimmerengo's Wars of Resistance against the British there in Zimbabwe. Uh, they finally uh, caught her, they hung her, cut her head off. Children always want to know what put all this cutting heads off. <laughs>